world. One day I was walking across and I saw the Irish Centre and I thought this is a very interesting place. So I peered through the window. And but who would call me in but Rose Scanlon? And she says, Come in and have a look. So I did. And after that, they couldn't get rid of me. <laughs> From the earliest Irish days. This photograph here, Niall MacDivitt. It was taken in the first building of the Irish Centre. And he was giving a talk. And I thought, beautiful light. And I was sitting behind Alan Rowden. I couldn't get a full view of Niall. So I incorporated in the design of the picture. So that's, that's what happened. Niall McDevitt is an extraordinary poet and a psychogeographer. He became our resident poet and used to put on the most magnificent poetry nights once a month for many years. Um, beautiful poet, really exciting to have in this space. He used, to, he used to do Irish literary walks, like walks on James Joyce, Oscar Wilde, W.B. Yeats. He sadly died a year ago almost, last September, on the 29th of September, and uh, we've lost one of our great, dearest friends and most talented, gifted artists. Um, but his memory lives on through his poetry, but also through some of the films which Shane Mary Doyle has made about Nile. W.B. Yeats, The Battle of Blood Road, amazing film, and also um, James Joyce, Reluctant Groom. His name is Bego. Bego is an amazing sax player, busked in Hammersmith for decades. What a beautiful man. And an important part of the Caribbean community in West London is loved very much. And the colours say so much about his religion and his philosophy. A beautiful guy. He also played with my brother on a record. And your brother was called? Phil Chen. Great bass player. Well, One of the greatest bass players call him a in legend, the world. But He's a legend, yeah. To me, when he goes on, I'm, I let him make the tea. <laughs> ah. <Yeah. laughs> and is he still playing? No, he died two years ago, yeah. was it? Yeah. Ah. And he's played with all the greats. He played with Bob Dylan. The Doors. The Doors. Rod Stewart. Rod Stewart, Jeff and Beck. Annie Lennox. Annie Lennox. I mean, B.B. King, Ray Charles. But the thing is, he gave me his camera, his 127 camera, and I gave him my guitar, I showed him a few licks, <laughs> and this is what happens. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. He became one of the greatest bass players yeah. in the world. Wow. And, yeah, fantastic. Uh, I was born in Kingston, Jamaica, and I went to a Jesuit school, which was very difficult, but in the end we got through. And I remember one funny story. When my mom took us there, went to see the headmaster, Father McMullen. And we were talking, and then Father McMullen says, what, what religion are they? So my mom looked at, him, looked at him and says, whatever you want them to be. I remember that. <laughs> so you're born of Chinese heritage. Yeah, born of Chinese heritage, and went to Jamaica, and educated there and then came to England. Oh, this fellow, he's always in the pub at the plough. Whenever we go, he's sitting in the corner with the light overhead so he could read his book. So he's always looking very intelligent. He's with his glasses. And he's got two or three books with him. So eventually we call him Chomsky, being very intellectual, right? He has four pints a night, that's it. And then he was a cook in the army, and he lives locally. So after he finished his drink, four pints, that's it, reading his book, and then he'll go home, and that's it. So his name is Chomsky because of all the book he's reading. And we haven't seen him since, ah. so we don't know what's happened to him. It's a, it's a but nice, he's a very dear friend. It's a very nice composition. Well, I, I saw him reading his book, and then he saw me next to him at the table. And then he, he just looked like that. I mean, that's his natural look.
Uh, this is a picture of Frank Grimes. He was at the ICC downstairs in the foyer and they had some function and he gave a very good talk and he had this book Finnegan's Wake. So I took a picture and then he said to me, Oh Frank, the book is upside down. If you look on it, you see. I said, don't worry, that's it, that's beautiful. And I, and I took the picture and that was it. Wow, that's very really good. This is a painting of Tom Quigley. Um, he was at Peter Blake's studio. At the moment, we are trying to make a documentary about him with Ross and myself. We shot some films, some rushes of him, but it's in the moment. We are, we are trying to get it sorted. We are trying to get it color-coded and all this. The thing is, um He's gone missing, and we've been looking for him for quite a while. We went round to visit him one day, and the house had all been boarded up. He's either been taken into a home, and we can't find him. He's now, he would be probably in his nearly 90 now. If he sees the camera, he knows exactly what, without me saying anything, he'll go and he pose. So, I mean, he recognises the importance of good pictures, right? I don't, I don't need to tell him anything, he just yeah. does it. Okay, the last picture we have to frame is fantastic, Eddie Linden. I remember Eddie Linden from the old days. When I mean old days, I mean not this new centre. Sometimes he'll get up on the table and he'll dance. Right, this is Eddie Linden, a poet. I think he's from Scotland. And he's always laughing and dancing. And one night he was on the table dancing. And I remember that night Rose, she had to call a cab for him to go home. And I distinctly remembering Rose says, made a veil. So <laughs> that's Eddie Linden. I mean, really nice guy. Scottish poet. And I think he has something to do with Seamus Heaney. And this picture was taken at a home near Maidavale. And he was in good spirit, but when we all reach that age, we can get a bit grumpy, uh, including myself. Well, I've had a few exhibitions at the Irish Centre, um, always invited by Ros because she saw the pictures I took and she thought, they're good enough for an exhibition. So I thought, well, <laughs> carry on. And over the years, my skill got greater, the pictures got better. So hence, this exhibition, Ros been asking me for some time now. So I went to all my Irish pictures, and I have picked out these. Some of them are very recent. So I'm always glad to be exhibiting at the Irish Centre because in a way I'm sort of giving back what they've given to all the Irish people in, in, in Hammersmith and West London, you know. So that's what the exhibition is all about. What I see through my lens reflect what the people have done in the centre, the Irish Centre. So much music, poetry and everything.